Good day students. This is going to be a quick overview of how you're going to be working on your essay edits over the next week or so. Uh, and this is remember in conjunction with history because your narrative is about the fall of the Roman Empire and so you're bringing those elements into your essay and we're in the midst of transitioning to your final draft. We're in that stage of writing where we go back through and uh, we work on doing some revision and some editing. Now remember that revision is where we go back and we look at details and we look see is there anything that needs to be changed or modified to uh, make this sure the story has a clear plot line to it. Uh, are there additional scenes we need to add to the story? Are there any other uh, lines of dialogue? Do I need to change the order of events? Uh, do I need to remove a character because they don't add to the story? Or do I need to bring someone else in? That's a part of the revision. And the actual editing is where we go back and we look at the actual structure, where we look at uh, the uh, making sure that we're following grammatical rules for a narrative. That there are some special rules for a narrative essay with regards to uh, dialogue, uh, with regards to uh, you know what can constitute a sentence uh, when it comes to using the uh, what we call the vernacular or the language of the day in accordance with your story. There, so there are some. There is some flexibility there. Uh, so the editing process, we're looking for uh, grammar rule errors. Do we have any run-on sentences where you have multiple ideas combined together, but you don't have any uh, coordinating conjunctions to make a compound sentence? Uh, am I uh, forgetting to add a predicate in my sentence where it doesn't help express that clear idea? Do I have comma splices where I have commas in the wrong place? Uh, did I forget to add periods in certain areas? Did I forget to capitalize? That's the actual editing process. We're looking for grammar errors. The actual revision is when we go back and we look and see, do I need to add additional details? Do I need to take some details away? Do I need to add characters, add scenes? That's the revision process. So there is a distinction here. So we're mainly focusing on the editing, but while you're still editing for in looking at the structure of your sentences, look, seeing how your story flows, uh, you may need to take a look and see, okay, do I need, while I'm doing this editing, do I notice anything I need to revise at the same time as well? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go through the uh, instructions for self-editing prior to your final draft. You're going to find this is very similar to what Mrs. Wheeling has already given to you with a previous essay as well. Uh, so uh, what I'm going to do is, since we're going to be doing this in our grammar section this week, I'm going to go through each of these steps here and go over some of the instructions. And this is going to be broken up throughout the week. So you're not required to get this all done in one day, but you will have a week to work on this. So make sure you pace yourself looking at doing like two to three of these points per day essentially here and uh, we'll look at how we can break this down uh, we're going to look at the first three steps in particular how we can do this uh, these three steps in the first day on monday and then we can move on from there with regards to tuesday wednesday thursday and friday so instructions for self-editing prior to final draft i'm going to go through all nine steps and then we're going to look at the first three so first thing we're going to do is we're going to number each sentence of your paper uh, and I'm going to show you how to do that here in just a moment in Google Docs. Uh, since we're not doing this on paper, we're going to be doing it digitally. I'll show you how you can number each sentence of your paper, have an example essay we're going to work with. Uh, the second part is we're going to put that amount of numbers at the bottom of your essay on the left margin. So at the very end of our essay, we're going to uh, count up all the uh, sentences we have in our essay. We're going to put that number at the bottom. I'll show you how to do that as well. And that will also give you an idea of if you have enough detail, depending on how many sentences that you have. Uh, third part, we will write next to each number whether the sentence is simple, complex, or compound. Now, remember, students, uh, in grammar, we talked about uh, each of these different kinds of sentences. And let me do a quick review here. A simple sentence contains only the principal elements, a subject and a predicate, and then you may have prepositional phrases or any adjectives or adverbs um, that are connected to the principal elements themselves. That's a simple sentence. It, it basically declares, it can declare, or it can give the command, um, or it can express a strong feeling, or it can ask a question. Uh, these can still be simple sentences. They just have the principal clause with a subject and a predicate. Complex, we've been talking about these quite recently. This is where we're dealing with uh, subordinate clauses attached with a uh, principal clause. Remember that a complex sentence will at least contain one subordinate clause with a principal clause, but there can be more than one subordinate clause within a sentence. You can actually have multiple in there. Compound is when we're dealing with uh, two principal clauses joined together as one complete sentence with a coordinated conjunction and a comma. Remember, those coordinated conjunctions are the fanboys, for, and, nor, but, or, yet, so. 
Now, we could also have what's called compound complex, and it is possible you have these in your sentences as well. This is where you can still have two principal clauses, but they can each have their own subordinate clauses as well. So those can get uh, a bit more difficult when writing those kinds of sentences, but they can be contained in there. All right, so we're dealing with those three kinds of sentences, a simple sentence, a complex sentence, or a compound sentence. Or we could have compound complex as well. We can throw that one in there too. Fourth step, you will write whether the sentence starts subject verb or some other way. What does that mean? Well, if you're just dealing with a simple sentence, then you are just starting with a subject subject verb agreement here. You're going to have a principal clause that, uh, that expresses a clear idea. You just have a subject and a verb in there. If you begin your sentence with a subordinate clause, uh, where it's depending on a principal clause, you need to indicate that, all right, I'm dealing, I'm starting with a subordinate clause. Or you may start it with a prepositional phrase, possibly. Uh, so the, kind of the sky is the limit here, but you have to look at each sentence and see, okay, how am I starting it? Am I starting with a principal clause? Am I starting with a subordinate clause? Am I starting with a prepositional phrase? How am I starting the sentence out? Step number five, we're going to write the main verb of the sentence after that. Uh, so what I'm going to do on step five is in that sentence, I'm going to have the principal clause and I need to find the verb of the sentence. Every single sentence we deal with has to have a verb within the clause. Now it could be a predicate verb, which it shows action, it expresses an action or a state of being. It could be a linking verb. Um, and a linking verb is going to link a subject to a predicate, it being a predicate nominative or a predicate adjective. We could have helping verbs as well, but the thing is those are not main verbs. They help a predicate verb or they help a linking verb. So we're looking for linking verbs and predicate verbs in particular for each of these sentences to see, okay, what is a verb of the sentence? Am I dealing with a predicate verb or with a linking verb? Remember that linking verbs are the be verbs. Am, is, are, was, were, be, being, been. Those are the be verbs and we use them to link a subject to a predicate. All right, step six. Write how many words are in the sentence. So you're going to go through each sentence and see, okay, how many words do I have in each of these sentences? You're going to write that out. Seven, write any grammar slash mechanical slash spelling errors you need to change. What's really great about making this a, a digital essay is uh, Google Docs does a pretty good job of showing any uh, spelling errors you have, uh, any grammar errors you have, any mechanical errors. When I say mechanical here, we're talking about like the structure of your sentence. Uh, if there's a difference in the subject and the predicate with regards to their number and gender. Uh, it, so it does a great job of helping you see some of those mechanical issues you may have in your essay that uh, don't allow your sentence to express a clear thought itself. Step eight, last, one of the last steps here is you're going to highlight in yellow your simple sentence. Highlight in blue a complex sentence, and highlight in green a compound sentence. I'm going to show you how you can do that in Google Docs. It's actually really easy to do it. I'll show you that how to do that with the certain tools here. And the step nine is count how many of your sentences are six words or less. And you notice that some of these you can actually do pretty easily uh, together. Like number six is where you write how many words are in the sentence. Number nine, count how many of your sentences are six words or less. You can do those both at the same exact time, and it won't take too long to do it, actually. All right, last part of the instructions here. After completing all these steps, it is time to add variety to your essay. If you have mostly simple sentences, choose a few to make into complex or compound sentences. If most of your sentences are seven words or less, choose three or more to make into longer sentences. Write notes as to how to correct your grammar slash mechanics slash spelling errors. If most of your sentences start subject verb, choose five or more to start in a different way. A participial phrase or prepositional phrase. We'll go over those here in just a moment. We know about prepositional phrases, but I'll recover participial phrases in just a moment as well. Uh, there's a clue here. It will contain a participial or a participle, excuse me, and that will end with ing typically. That's a participle. We'll talk about that in here just a little bit, though. If you have many similar verbs or your verbs are weak, uh, choose five verbs to change to strong active verbs, where it shows action going on, that it really grabs the attention of the, the reader. The changes on this lined piece of paper, which is actually going to be digitally here, will be incorporated into the final draft, so save it. And we're going to make sure that you save this digitally so you can have it with your, we're going to have two separate documents. We're going to have your rough draft and we're going to have this new edited draft here. This is going to be very important. I'm going to show you how to do this properly so it's not confusing. It's simple and it's streamlined for you so you can do this step by step, chunk by chunk. Don't try and get it all done in one day. Take your time, 
take a piece at a time. And then we're going to make sure we attach it uh, and, that, and you don't lose it. Okay, so I'm going to pause the video here. I'm going to make some changes here, and then we're going to uh, take a look at an example essay, and we're going to go through this step by step how to do this. All right, students. Uh, so I'm now in the assignment. I just need it from the teacher view here, but this will be look very similar to what you get from the student view. Uh, so your narrative essay editing, uh, you're going to have a couple of documents in here. One, you'll have a copy of this video uh, in your uh, resources. Uh, but you have two other documents in here. You'll have the same virtual self-editing document that we just looked at a moment ago. A copy of that is in there available for you. And then there's going to be a document here called Narrative Essay Edits, and you're going to have your own copy here. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this document right here, and this will open up uh, my document. So you'll have one as well too. What you'll need to do is with the rough draft that you have created, you're going to copy and paste it into this new document. So that means you need to go into your, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> my apologies. What you need to do is uh, go into your Google Drive or uh, open it from your desktop, wherever your uh, essay is, your typed version. You need to open that essay up. So I have an example essay uh, right here. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the entire essay and the really easy way of doing this. There's uh, a couple of ways. Uh, so let's see, you can't right click to do that to select all the text. But what you can do is make sure you have the blinking cursor on your page, hold down the control button and then hit the A button while holding down control. And that will select all of your text. Another uh, little control you can use, a little shortcut, is keep holding down the control button and then click the C button. When I do that, I have just now copied my text. Another way I can do that is by right clicking all the selected text here, and I can also click copy as well too. Now you saw the options there, I can cut it, don't do that, because that's going to take all the text from your essay and it's going to delete it off of the page. Now you can still recover it if you accidentally click it. But please don't click that because if you do that, then you're going to lose everything. Okay, so just click copy or again, control A, control C to copy it and come back over here to the document that I need to put my uh, essay into so I can create my edits. And I can just either do control V to paste it in or I can then right click and click paste. I can do it either way. So now I don't need my original uh, rough draft essay. This is the one I'm going to be making all my edits in. You can already notice that it's already analyzed the, the text here and has found some possible uh, spelling errors that need to be fixed. So again, we're going to go step by step through this. So again, if we go back up here to our instructions for self-editing. First thing we need to do is to number each sentence of your paper. But how am I going to do that? Well, let me show you. So here is my uh, introductory paragraph right here. I'm going to type the number one and put a period after it. Click space. I've just started my first sentence. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and after each sentence, I'm going to hit enter. There's sentence number two. Next one, hit enter. There's sentence number three. And I'm just going to do this for each sentence here. Just going through and numbering them. I'm going to go to pause the video here. I'm going to go ahead and number all these sentences and then we're going to move on to the next step. All right, so I've gone ahead and numbered all of my sentences. And step number two is in the bottom left hand of the margin, I need to go ahead and put the number of sentences I have. So I'm going to just type in here number of sentences. And I've already got a count right there. I have 21 sentences. Okay, then I need to look at the next step. Step number three. Right next to each number, whether the sentence is simple, complex, or compound. So let me show you how we can do this here to make it really, really easy. I can just put it at the end of the sentence, but that can get confusing very quickly. So I'm going to show you how to do it uh, in a little more uh, simple fashion. So at the end of number one, I'm going to bring my cursor. I'm going to hit enter. It's going to have the number two right there, but I'm not making another sentence. I'm going to hit my button called tabs on the top left hand of my keyboard. When I hit tab, it then make, lets me do kind of like an outline format. And this is where I can put the kind of sentence I have. So we look at this sentence. I was just a boy when Rome was invaded and the invaders destroyed everything. 
you're going to notice here, first of all, when we analyze the sentence, we look for our uh, according to conjunctions first, and we do have one and in here. And this is going to be a compound sentence. I was just a boy when Rome was invaded. The invaders destroyed everything. So what I'm going to do here is going to indicate that this is a compound sentence. Okay, so again, I go back to my steps here. I'm going to write next to each number whether the sentence is simple, complex, or compound. So I'm going to take a look at first. So I have the compound sentence. I'm going to do the same thing for sentence number two. Hit enter at the end. Hit the tab button in the top left corner of my, of my keyboard. In order to understand the rest of the story, you will have to know a little about me. All right, so if we look at this sentence, we don't have any uh, according conjunctions. The order of analysis is phrases, clauses, principal elements, modifiers, with the phrase in here, in order, another one, to understand. Uh, well, actually, not to understand there. Uh, let's see here. Uh, of the story, that's also a prepositional phrase. The principal clause here will be, you will have to know a little about me. There's actually quite a few prepositional phrases going on in here. Um, but we have also some interesting uh, uh, set up here for some of our verbs as well, too. Uh, but we are dealing with a simple sentence here. Number three, my name is Lucario. That's a simple sentence. And we're going to do this for every single sentence that we have in our sentence. I lived in the suburbia, uh, excuse me, I lived in the uh, suburba with my family. Again, another simple sentence. If you're the student that I'm uh, using this essay for, consider yourself blessed that I'm going through and doing a couple of these sentences for you, but I'm not going to do all of them. This will be the last one right here. Again, my father was Julius Antony, my mother was Julia Antony, and my brother is Lucius Antony. All right, with regards to uh, this sentence here, we are listing things out. What I recommend instead of using uh, commas, uh, you may look at using uh, semicolons since you're listing things out here. Uh, but each of these here, these are still, each of these, my father was Julius Antony, my mother was Julia Antony, my brother is uh, Lucius Antony. Uh, looks like we're still dealing with a simple sentence here. Okay, so that is uh, the step number three. So we've gone through, we have uh, uh, numbered uh, each sentence. Okay, we put that number at the bottom of our essay in the left, on the left margin. Step three, we're going to go through and write to, uh, right next to each number, whether the sentence is simple, complex, or compound. Step four, this is where we write whether the sentence starts subject, verb, or some other way. Now, what's really great here, since I've already started this format, I've already got a compound sentence right here. If I just hit enter on number one, I now have uh, another selection here, and I can tell how I start my sentence. I was just a boy when Rome was invaded, and the invaders destroyed everything. Here we're dealing with subject verb, since we're dealing with compound sentence, which means there's two principal clauses, each contain their own subject and predicate. So we're dealing here with a, we're starting with subject verb in this sentence. We go down to number two, in order to understand, we start with in order, that's starting with a prepositional phrase. Number three, my name is uh, Lucario, so again, we're dealing with subject verb. Here again, we're dealing with a linking verb. Name is Lucario. Name would be subject is a linking verb. Lucario is predicate nominative, but we are still doing this with subject verb. Number four, I lived in the suburba with my family. Again, this is going to be subject verb. And then number five, my father was Julius Antony, again, subject verb for this one here. All right, so that's a very simple and easy way of doing this. We start out with uh, numbering each sentence, and then we're gonna tell what kind of sentence we're dealing with, and then we're gonna st uh, state how we're starting out the sentence itself. That takes us through step number four. It'll take a little bit of time doing this. That's where we're gonna break this out throughout the week. Step five is gonna write the main verb of the sentence after that. So. I'm going to do C now. Notice I'm listing everything out for each sentence here. Got this first sentence numbered. A is for what kind of sentence. B is how I start the sentence. And then C again is write the main verb of the sentence after that. That could be a predicate verb or a linking verb. I was just a boy when Rome was invaded. All right, so I was boy. So was is going to be our linking verb. 
um, in here. And I can uh, I can indicate what kind of verb it is that I want to. So I'm just put in parentheses. Was is a linking verb. So I was just a boy when Rome was invaded. Actually, I'm going to fix this. This is not just comp a compound sentence. This is a compound complex sentence here. And I just noticed that there where we said when Rome was invaded. That's a subordinate clause right there. Rome was invaded. That's going to be subject and then predicate verb with the helping verb was invaded. When is going to be that uh, adverbial element used at the beginning of the subordinate clause. Uh, so that is going to be uh, telling us was I was boy when when was I boy when Rome was invaded. OK, anyways. So was in the first principal clause is going to be that main verb for a linking verb. Uh, we also have in the uh, second uh, principal clause of the compound complex sentence, the invaders destroyed everything. And we have another main verb in there, destroyed. That's a predicate verb. Now, I'm not required to indicate what kind of verb it is, but you may find that that should be very helpful when you do that. All right, sentence two. In order to understand the rest of the story, you will have to know a little about me. All right, so we're dealing with uh, will have to know. It's dealing with our main uh, verb here. So again, we'll have to know that's going to be our main verb. Now we have will and have acting as uh, helping verbs. To know, this is going to be what we call an infinitive. And an infinitive is two plus a verb. Now, infinitives can also be used as a, a subjects or adjectives or adverbs themselves. We're not really going to dive into that right now. Uh, but we do have a uh, the main verb in here, know. So we're going to put will have to know. Uh, and with regards to know, it's still going to be our uh, predicate verb in here as well, since that's the main verb right there. So I'm going to go ahead and just indicate predicate verb and just note that to know is an infinitive. Okay, we'll come back to that at a later time. All right, uh, number three, my name is Lucario. Uh, with regards to our main verb, that is going to be is. Is is our main verb there, a linking verb. Notice how once we kind of organize it like this and take it step by step, this is not too difficult. It just takes a little bit of time working on it. I lived in the suburba with my family. With my family is a prepositional phrase. In the suburba, uh, excuse me, is a prepositional phrase. I lived is a principal clause. I subject lived is going to be our predicate verb. And then sentence number five here. My father was Julius Antony. My mother was Julia Antony. My brother is Lucius Antony. So we're going to be dealing here with was. That's going to be linking verb. Now I do recommend here that uh, this student uh, with this list here, uh, I would say maybe uh, my family included my father Julius Antony, my mother Julia Antony, and my brother Lucius Antony. I may suggest you uh, turn it into one sentence like that. You should listing things out because each of these lists here are actually their own independent sentences. Uh, so I would recommend uh, reformulating that sentence there to make it uh, still express the idea that you're listing out the family members, but make it a little more uh, clearly put together. So it's one sentence instead of three sentences trying to be combined together like that. That's a recommendation I have for uh, this student here with regards to the editing. Okay, so that was number five, write the main verb of the sentence. Number six, write how many words are in the sentence. So, and then now I'm going to go back and do D. So it's like a number one, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. I have 14 words in this sentence. So total of 14 words. I do that for uh, number two. And I'm gonna do this for every single one because that would take a while doing that myself. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 right there. All right, now. Uh, sometimes in these word processors, there's actually a little tool that you can use uh, to count the words for you and to look at each individual word. So what I can do is I can select the text and we're going to take a look and see if we can find it in Google Docs. Uh, there is a little tools menu here. And if you click on tools, it has word count right here. It also gives you the uh, shortcut, Control-Shift-C. So if we click on word count, 
it's going to give me everything about this uh, sentence I've highlighted. And uh, it's on page one of two words. I have four words selected of 366. This tells me how many words total I have as well. 366 words total in this essay. And then it goes into individual characters, each letter, um, and then characters excluding spaces. So this takes out all the spaces. I have in total 1,748 individual characters, which individual letters. I actually have 366 words total in my essay. So my name is Lucario. I'm going to have four words. And we use a shortcut this time for number four. So I'm going to go ahead and do D. I'm going to select number four. And it was Control, Shift, and C. Brings it back up. I have eight words in this sentence. You're going to find that this is actually a little faster than counting them out individually. Just, again, select. Click on Tools, and do Word Count, or Control-Shift-C. I have 16 words in this sentence right here. All right, well, let's kind of went ahead and did all five sentences here, so you're welcome there. All right, now we need to move on to our next step. So six is write out how many words are in the sentence. Seven, write any grammar slash mechanical slash spelling errors you need to change. So that'll be E. So there are no errors. Now I can just type in no errors to fix. So I was just a boy when Rome was invaded and the invaders destroyed everything. This is fine. No errors. I'm just going to put that there. Look at number two. In order to understand the rest of the story, notice there's a pause right there. There's usually a, uh, a little uh, a grammatical tool that we use a little piece of punctuation we use to indicate pauses, and those are commas. If you notice in this sentence, in order to understand the rest of the story, you will have to know a little about me. I'm missing a comma. I need to add a comma between story and you. Notice that, uh, in fact, out here, I've already got an error right here. But notice here, this is incorrect here between story and you. I'm going to go ahead and just put quotation marks around it, indicate that this is very specific. But notice right there, it, it saw that there was an error, which just said between the story and you. Um, if I was writing an actual sentence here, uh, I'm just indicating a note here that I need to do something. Up here, you're going to notice that it didn't catch the missing comma. You see that? There's nothing in blue. Usually, it's, it'll be in blue and when it, uh, it sees that there's an error, but it doesn't detect it. These uh, word uh, uh, programs here for typing, they do a pretty good job at catching things, but don't catch everything. So make sure you still go through and read your sentences. And one good practice is reading your sentence out loud to yourself, because then you can really hear the errors. Uh, sometimes we read it in our, in our mind, like we don't read it aloud. We just read it to ourselves. It sounds good in our head. But when I read it out loud, sometimes I can catch those errors that I didn't detect when just reading it silently to myself. So I highly recommend you read it out loud to yourself. So this sentence, we need to add a comma after story and right before you. Number three, my name is Lucario. There is no error here. This one is fine. Sentence four, I lived in the Subura with my family. Um, I'm curious about Subura because I'm not familiar with what this student is trying to indicate. So I put on here, what is uh, the Subura? No other errors at this time. Other than misspelling errors. <laughs> That's a question I have right there. Grammatically, it, it, it's supposed to say, uh, uh, suburba or suburban. I'm just curious for there. So I'm just gonna put that in there. And then number five, E, my father was Julius Antony. I've indicated here, uh, this is a run on sentence. Either separate, separate sentences. or combine into a single sentence with a list. For instance, I would say, 
My family included my father, Julius Antony, comma, my mother, Julia Antony, comma, and my brother, Lucius Antony. So all you do is my father was Julius Antony, my mother, Julia Antony, and my brother, Lucius Antony. That's how I would look at making that list right there. I do that for every single sentence I have. Number eight, now I'm going to go through and highlight my simple sentences, my complex sentences, and my compound sentences using these three colors of yellow, blue, and green. So my simple sentence, I'm going to start with that yellow. I had a couple in here. So what I'm going to do is go back to A, have the compound complex, I'll find there. Here's a simple sentence. I'm going to highlight this one, so it looks like all the text. And I have some tools up here, like this is for making it bold, but we're not going to do that. This is to italicize, we're not doing that. This is to underline, but we're not doing that. This is to change the color of the text itself. And then right here we have highlight. And we're going to highlight in yellow our simple sentences. Go through, find all my simple sentences. I'm going to highlight them yellow. And we wonder, well, why am I doing this, Mr. Kordoff? Why am I going through and highlighting each of these sentences different colors? Well, this is going to give you a visual to help you see, do I have another variety in my sentences? Am I just doing a lot of simple sentences? Or am I uh, having a variety of uh, compound sentences? Do I have any compound complex in there? I want to indicate what kind of sentences. And I already notice here, out of my first five, four of them are simple. I may want to go and look at possibly changing some of these to give them a little more flavor. Maybe add a subordinate clause in there to make it a complex sentence. Uh, maybe I need to add a second principal clause to make it a compound sentence. If you look at the compound complex right here, you notice that I don't have um, a color for that. Uh, you can choose another color with regards to that. So we're doing yellow, green, and blue. So for a compound complex, uh, you know, I'm going to do a fun one here. I've been on a kick lately for purple. So I'm going to choose a nice purple color for my compound uh, complex. And that one's a little too dark, though. It's a little hard to read the text itself. So I'm going to do a little bit of a lighter purple. There we go. That's a little easier right there. All right. So now I can indicate, that, okay, I've got a compound complex, which is pretty good to start with. Um, but I've got four uh, the uh, simple sentences here. I may want to go back and change uh, some of those. And then I want to count how many of your sentences are six words or less. So I want to indicate if these uh, are six words or less. So right down here, I have number of sentences are 21 total right now. And then number of sentences less than six words. I put that number in there. So what I would need to do then is I just need to scan back through and look at D. I have 14 words, 18 words, ooh, four words. I have one sentence right there, eight words. Six. So right now I just have one sentence that's less than six words at this point. But I haven't gone through all 21 to see if I have any others here that have less than uh, uh, six words. Uh, I see sentence number 15 right there. We'll probably ca we'll count most likely. Uh, but other than that, this, this essay here does a pretty good job of uh, providing enough words for some detail in there. So that means they're probably putting in some prepositional phrases, some adjectives and adverbs, some subordinate clauses, which is good. The, the more detail you have, for the most part, the better. You don't want to be too detailed. You don't want to overwhelm your reader. But, uh, you know, if you have a, a good deal of detail per sentence, that's going to help keep your reader engaged. The more detail information your reader has, the more they can visualize the story, and the more uh, they're going to be able to uh, to really connect with the story and being able to like, visualize it for themselves. Okay, so that's through step number nine right there. So after again, after completing all these steps, go back and add some variety to your essay. If you have mostly simple sentences, choose with you to make it to complex or compound sentences. If you have less than seven words, uh, or six or seven words here or less, choose three of those sentences to make into longer sentences by adding additional details. Then write notes as to how to correct your grammar mechanics spelling errors. So you may wonder, okay, how do I do that? How am I going to make notes in here that I need to go and change something? So let's go back here to the essay. I'm going to show you how you can uh, make some notes on your essay. 
And there's a, a little tool that we can use to help us with that. And I believe it's under here in, we're in the editing mode. Uh, but I can also go to a different mode here called uh, suggesting. So I'm going to go ahead and click. Actually, you know what? No, I want to go back to editing. Uh, click the wrong thing. It's back over here. There's another tool. So we have uh, our tools here, right here. You're going to notice there's a little box right here called comment. So if I have an error in a sentence, and say they need to change something like right here, number two, um, I can select my sentence, and then I can click on the comment box right here. And I can add a comment. I can tell myself, don't forget to add my comma here. And I can add that comment and boom, right there I have my note. I need to make a fix to this sentence right here. So don't forget to add my comma, add a comma between story. Oh yeah, I need to take care of that. Okay, uh, let's say here, uh, my name is Lucario. Okay, this sentence, I got less than four words. I really need to work on this one to make a comment to myself. Uh, maybe add more detail to my name or how or why I received this name. Just coming up with something here. So my name is Lucario, and you can say like maybe... I was named after my grandfather for his victorious campaigns. In Gaul, that adds a little more detail to it. But I can just make a notation here to help me with the editing. And I just add that comment right there. And it's going to say resolve right here. I don't need to click on that. This is where I can say, okay, I fixed it. Uh, but these are just for notes here. So what you can do is as you go back through your sentences, and notice here that when I click on a certain area, this notation here uh, went to the left a little bit. If I click right here, if I click on this sentence, this note comes up. So this means this note is for this sentence, and then this note is for this sentence. Pretty little cool little feature there to help you with that. So this is where you can make yourself some notations here, and then you can go back and resolve them at a later time to fix them. But you can add your details like this is how I want to fix it. And this is where I can make my notations here. Again, like number five here, I uh, see E. I made a run on sentence here. So I want to make a notation here how I want to change my run on sentence. Make sure I just list out the family members. For example, my father was Julius Antony, my mother Julia Antony, and my brother Lucius Antony. That might be a suggestion I make to my own self when we're reading back through it. But you can use this comment feature to make your notes that Mrs. Wheeling is wanting you to do for your essay. That way you can have those to the side and you can make your own notations to your own self. So if most of your sentences are seven words or less, choose three or more to make it to longer sentences. I can make notations on uh, those sentences as well, how I can add additional details. Uh, if most of your sentences start subject verb, choose five or more to start in a different way with a participial phrase or a prepositional phrase. I can make notations about that as well. Let's say right here, uh, so this number sentence four is subject verb. Let's say I wanted to uh, spice it up a little bit. Let's say I'm going to make another notation right here for this sentence. I lived in the uh, suburba with my family. And let's see here. Ah, yes, I could say uh, add to the beginning. When I was a child, comma, if I add the beginning there, now I've added a subordinate clause and I've changed it from being a simple sentence into being a complex sentence and starting at subject verb necessarily, but I'm starting it with a 
uh, with a uh, subordinate conjunction here. Now, it's still going to have a subject and a predicate in there, which is fine, but we're starting with now a subordinate clause uh, instead. So that's going to change it up a little bit there. But that's what I can do to kind of go through each sentence and to break it down. And this is going to take some time here. Uh, so you're not going to get this done in one sitting. So you're going to need to break this up throughout the week. So here's a suggestion that I have with regards to uh, breaking this up. You also need to also make sure you look through your verbs. You find you have five weak verbs, five weak action verbs. You need to go back and change those. Uh, you can use those, that comment feature to change those verbs as well. Um, that's definitely fine. But when it comes to each of these steps here, uh, here's what I recommend. So I recommend on Monday, work through steps one through three. Open up a new document in the assignment, copy and paste your essay into there, and then separate out each sentence and number them, as I mentioned earlier in this video. Then after you have numbered them out, make sure at the bottom of your essay you tell how many sentences you have all together. That's going to give the indication if you have enough sentences or not in your essay. And then you're going to tell me, are these complex sentences? Are they simple sentences? Are they compound sentences? Are they compound complex? You need to indicate that. So again, what I did was after the each sentence, I would just hit enter and click tab on my keyboard. And that would just write on A, what kind of sentence I have. Do that for each sentence. I just, just do that on Monday. I think that's enough work right there uh, to do in one day. Now, if you want to go further on Monday, you can. Tuesday, steps four and five um, are uh, pretty good to do right there, right? Whether the sentence starts subject verb or some other way. And then five, write the main verb of the sentence after that. So I would suggest on Tuesday, do step four and step five. Wednesday, I would do step six and step seven. And then Thursday, step eight and then step nine. And that'll break it up right there. Then on Friday, you're going to wrap it up by going back and checking to see, okay, do I need to add any notes? And you can do the notes throughout the week as well. As you begin to see things, you can add notes as you're going along. You can mix that in. Uh, make sure you go and uh, while you're indicating what kind of sentence you're dealing with here, okay? So for instance, when you are, uh, let's see here, number three, right next to each number, whether the sentence is simple, complex, or compound, you can go ahead and highlight while you're doing this at the same exact time as well, too. Uh, so when you have the compound complex sentence, okay, I've already done it in purple. Okay, this is a simple sentence, but go ahead and highlight in yellow. Okay, another simple sentence, highlight in yellow, and et cetera, and et cetera. But that's how I break out each step. Steps one through three on Monday, four and five on Tuesday, six and seven on Wednesday, eight and nine on Thursday, and then Friday, I'm wrapping up and going back through and see, okay, uh, did I highlight all my sentences? The color is going to help me see, okay, how many of each different kind of sentence do I have going on? If I notice there's more than more of one color than another, I might need to go back and change some of those sentences. I need to make sure that uh, I've indicated any grammar or mechanical or spelling errors so I can get those fixed. I can make a note for that, make sure I've added some notes in there. Uh, for some of my sentences. I only have a note for every single sentence, but definitely make some notations for some of those sentences, especially those that have the errors in them or that need to have additional details added or change up the format of the sentence. These are notes I'm making to myself. So when I go back through and look at this document for my final draft, I'm like, oh yeah, I need, uh, need to change this, need to change that. Maybe in the notes you uh, add like, oh, I should add another character in here to uh, add more to the story. You can make a notation about that or maybe you need to make a note there. I need to change the setting here. Or I didn't really explain where this part of the story is happening. I need to add that in there. You can make that notation in those comments as well too for yourself. Again, don't forget about the verbs. You can notice some of your verbs are pretty weak, your predicate verbs in particular. Uh, make sure you change up some of those to be uh, have a little more oomph behind them, to have a little more action behind them as well too. Okay, students, that should help kind of streamline this process for you throughout the week. Of course, if you have any questions for your teachers, feel free to reach out to us. Uh, Ms. Wheeling and myself in particular are working together on this essay. So if you, uh, I would uh, first reach out to Ms. Wheeling, but if you need myself for any of the historical aspect uh, of your essay, if you have questions on some of the history behind it, if you have your facts correct, you're more than welcome to re reach out to me or, or any questions on the grammar as well. Myself, Ms. Wheeling, will be Sabagall as well. Uh, but we're here for you. 
help you with this process, and I hope this helps you out. Please let us know if you have questions, and we look forward to seeing you in our live sessions this week, and we hope you have a blessed week.